into Auburn territory. A 26-yard run. The Auburn defense, Ron Stowe with Benji Rowan and Nate Hill on the defensive line. The inside backers are Kurt Crane and Edward Phillips. The outside backers, Alvin Mitchell and Andre Bruce. At cornerbacks, Kevin Porter, Alvin Briggs. And the safeties are Greg Staples and Carlo Cheatham. It's interesting that Georgia comes out to try to throw the ball immediately. Jackson rolls out to his right, gets good containment. Then this is what he does even better than throw it. He runs it. He makes a great play here, and Georgia's on the move already. Osborne getting set in the slot to the right. Here's Lars Tate's first carry of the day, and he takes it to the Auburn 44-yard line. Inside linebacker Kurt Crane came over to make the tackle. <laughs> Lars Tate is the number four rusher in the SEC and number 20 in the NCAA with those statistics this season. The Georgia Bulldogs coming in at 7-2. Their losses to Clemson and LSU, 4-1 and one in the SEC. Second down and six. The tight end flip-flops, Troy Sadowski. To the fullback, and Ellis just a couple of yards to the 42. In there was inside linebacker Edward Phillips to make the tackle. All right, third down and two. Very big play for Georgia. They usually like to take the quarterback number 14 and attack the outside perimeter. So we could look for 14 to roll to his right and either run or pass. The Bulldogs send John Thomas number nine wide to the right side. Osborne a wing left. Now Osborne in motion. Jackson pressured, escapes, dives for the first down. It's going to be awfully close at the 39-yard line. The spot of the football lead is the all-important thing here. It's going to be fourth down. Jackson rolls out to right as we talked about it because he wants to put the pressure on the outside perimeter. Right here, he makes a good judgment to go forward, and instead of really just ramming in there and getting the first down, he's about a yard short. And one of the reasons why they go to Johnson eventually, he's bigger and stronger, and they're worried about Jackson's size. He's only 5'11", 175 pounds. David Dukes is the short punt specialist for the Georgia Bulldogs. His punt angle toward the sideline, and it goes out of bounds. And we'll take a look at the Auburn Tiger offense. The quarterback of Auburn is Jeff Berger. The running backs is Stacy Danley and Reggie Ware. The receivers are Lawyer Tillman, Walter Reeves, and Duke Donaldson. The offensive tackles Eric Floyd and Stacy Searles. And interior line: Stacy Dunn, John Hudson, and Rodney Garner. This is an Auburn Tiger offense that leads the SEC at just under 32 points per game. And trying to bounce back off that big loss against Florida State last week. Donaldson in motion. Georgia hands it off and it comes to Stacey Danley. The Georgia defensive line, Bill Goldberg and Larry Brown. Up front along with Tyrone McClendon and Aaron Chuck. The linebackers are Vince Guthrie, John Bradley, and Terry Webster. And the cornerbacks are Ben Smith and Mark Vincent. And the safety is Will Jones, Rusty Beasley. It's going to be second down and six for the Auburn Tigers. Berger on the draw. Dan lines ahead to the 20-yard line. Stacy Danley, a redshirt freshman from Winston, Georgia, and a number of players lead that crossing the border to play back in their home state today for Auburn. Danley has uh, averaged over five yards per carry in the last three ball games. Now's Berger's first chance to throw the ball with third down and two. Usually in these situations, he likes to go to one of the backs coming out of the backfield for about a four or five yard pass. It's third and two. Donaldson again in motion. It'll be a handoff to Danley to the 25, to the 26, and a first down for the Auburn Tigers. Automatically, we can see what Auburn's game planning right now. Auburn's going to test the manhood of the Georgia defensive line by running right at him. As he goes back on his sprint draw, he gives the ball to Danley, who makes a break to the backside. Number 54, Guthrie, misses the tackle, but automatically, you find out, Auburn's going to test the man-on-man -man who's a better person up front. 
the first first down of the game. Auburn has it first and ten from the their own 26. Berger throws over the middle and it goes to Walter Reeves, the tight end. And Walter is over the 30 after the 33 yard line. Berger's first pass, a nice completion right in the middle. Now what Berger does back in here, if you watch, he drops back and he reads number 42, Brantley. Brantley goes to his right, to his left, and he hits Reeves right in between them. That play is designed to watch Brantley and go opposite of him to the tight end. Nice strategy, safe pass to start the ball game for Berger. Second down, and the handoff to the fullback, Reggie Ware. And the senior from Huntsville, Alabama, with the carry out to the 35-yard line. Reggie Ware gets those tough yards for the Tigers. Big, strong runner, 6'2", 236 in the senior. The one thing about Ware, they like him on this situation, which is third down and one. But against Florida State last week, they almost lost the ball game because they didn't make this kind of situation. Second, third down situation for the Tigers. Reeves and Sellers in, the two tight ends. Ware gets the tough yards. And a first down for the Auburn Tigers out to the 38-yard line. Well, there's a big difference automatically. The offensive line of Hudson, Dunn, and Garner up middle, watching in the front. Then in 66, Hudson gets a good block, and there comes Ware up the middle. That's a wedge blocking used about 1,900 to run into the <laughs> middle. An outstanding play because the linemen come off the ball, and the big fullback, 236-pound Ware, makes a big, important first down for the Auburn Tigers. Auburn has moved the football out from its own 12 to the 38. Berger with the toss, and it goes to Danley, and he's tripped up. The Georgia defense is there, led by number 42, linebacker John Brandley. He's Boy, a whale of a player. What a player he is, and number 42 comes from the inside. Now watch him to the right of your picture as Danley breaks back. Wow, he really gets popped by, by uh, number 42, Brantley. Brantley is 6'2", 225 pounds, and he comes from the inside. He's from Wildwood, Florida, and an outstanding middle linebacker. I can feel John Brantley making that last tackle. It is second down and 10. Here's Berger going to the air, and he throws complete to Reggie Ware. Hit and dropped immediately over the 40-yard line up to about the 43. <laughs> No score. We have 8.36 to play. There's a penalty flag down in the play. Coming over for Georgia, Vince Guthrie, the middle linebacker to cover. The referee, Dick Burleson, indicating a face mask against the Georgia Bulldogs. Pat Dye, the Auburn coach, Vince Dooley, facing the sidelines. Georgia can clinch a share of the SEC championship with a victory, they end their regular season against Georgia Tech. And of course, Auburn must win two today against Georgia and then against Alabama. Please. That was a 15-yard penalty because it was not in Burton. That face match was done on purpose, and that's why it's three times as long a penalty, 15 yards. So the penalty gives Auburn a first down and 10 at the Georgia 42. Berger throwing to the near side, tipped it incomplete. Fine defensive play for Georgia's roverback, Will Jones, as he tipped that pass away from Lawyer Tillman. They tried to get the ball to Tillman that time, which we talked about at the beginning of the show, but number 89, Jones, gets a good play. Now, it's a fake to the tailback and rolls to the right. Berger's right on target here, but watch Jones, number 80, 29, just deflect the ball at the last minute. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, two red shirts on Tillman. That's the object. Keep that guy bracketed. One deep, one short, because he's a great football player. It is second down and 10. Berger handing it off. Danley over the 40, down to the 38-yard line. I know, Lee, that you really respect the talents of Lawyer Tillman, not only as a receiver, but also as a runner. After he catches the football, that's what makes him even more dangerous. He's so big. He's 6'4", 224 pounds. He averages over 18 yards per catch. That's why they've got to get the ball and find ways to get the ball in his hands. So another third down situation, Lee. It's third and six for the Tigers. See what Jeff Berger has in mind here. He's going to send to the near side. Alexander Wright is a wide receiver. In fact, four go out. Berger looking, and it's going to be incomplete. He's trying to hit Stacy Daly out of the backfield. Ryan Schulman 
will come in to punt for Auburn as Berger misfires. Berger misfired that time because the, pa the pass receiver did not run the correct route. He thought he had him coming a little bit closer, but he went a little bit deeper than normal. Mike Bowen is the deep man for the Georgia Tigers. No score, 7.28 to play in the quarter. And Shulman to punt it away. He'll be kicking from midfield. John Hudson is the deep snapper. And Shulman angling at the eight-yard line. The catch is made by Mike Bowen. A timeout on the field after the 30-yard punt. There's no score in Athens, Georgia. Auburn. The showdown matchup. Georgia back up in its own territory on their eight-yard line. First down and ten to start their second drive of the game. Jackson handing to Lars Tate. Auburn sealing the corner quickly. And Tate gains just a couple of yards. Carlo Cheatham knocked him out of bounds. You notice the defensive secondary, number 35, Cheatham come up there, six foot 190 and a junior. He came up because it was a run all the way, and those backs from, from Auburn will support fast unless Georgia opens up and throws the ball more. They're going to have those backs in their backfield all day long. James Jackson, the Georgia quarterback, gets sucking down. And Jackson wants to throw. Rolling right. Floats it down the sideline. Incomplete and nearly intercepted by number three, Kevin Porter. Let's check in with Tim Brando in the studio. The Texas Longhorns are back in the Cotton Bowl hunt. And the reason Eric Metcalf, yeah, the son of Terry, 57 yards for the touchdown here. It turns out to be the game over at TCU. And all 36 carries, 206 yards. Texas 24, TCU 21. The Longhorns could play A&M on Thanksgiving night for the Cotton Bowl. Third down and eight for Georgia here. No score first quarter, 7.07 remaining. Georgia going with the two tight ends. Nate Lewis going in motion. The pitch to Lars Tate. 15 out to the 17-yard line. You might wonder why Tate ran the football down there because what Georgia wanted to do that time is not make a turnover. Here's Tate, the senior tailback. Gets a toss play made famous by O.J. Simpson with the same number and drives himself forward. That was a good strategy call by Vince Dooley because he did not want to turn the ball over to Auburn in that area. Fourth down on a yard and Joey Hester coming in the punt. Averaging just over 36 yards per punt. And back deep is Duke Donaldson for the Auburn Tigers. Hester controlling the high snap. Donaldson takes it on the run at the Georgia 45 and is hit immediately. 6.15 left to play in the opening quarter and still no score at Georgia. This big rivalry. Outstanding field position for the Tigers at the Georgia 46 to start the drive. Daniel. Just a yard to the 45. Auburn picked up a great deal in field position Lee. They were backed up on their own 12. Now they start the drive after the Georgia punt at the 46. That was their plan to play good field position until they get an opportunity to let it open up. Now, one of the things that Georgia's got to be careful about is that Auburn will run a lot of the clock here because they've got a good balanced attack. And if you do that, you don't get the ball very much. It'll be the second quarter. Donaldson and Tillman are wide outs. Berger throwing, and it's Donaldson at the 40. Gets the first down and out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Berger is now 3-4-5 in throwing the football in this game. And Pat Dye was telling us yesterday about what a great practice Berger had on Thursday. Berger's an outstanding quarterback, and as I said at the top of the show, when he's hot, they're almost impossible to stop. The one thing you like about here is he throws the ball off his front, front foot with the pressure from the defensive lineman 90, 97 in his face. Giles, Berger is the key to the Auburn attack. Watch him. He threw 55 passes of practice Thursday, hit 54 of them, and the one miss was a drop. Here's Donaldson at the 30, and out of bounds at the Georgia 24. Berger throws it left, and Berger throws it right with the same result. The one thing you like about Berger, he's getting good protection also. Number 63, Eric Floyd in the left tackle, is making a good job, good protection on our star of the pregame show, 92 targets. He can't get by him because the big guy, 6'5", 270 Floyd, has got perfect body position on targets number 92. Auburn picking up its fifth first down of the quarter. Five minutes remaining, no score. 
Jones at the Georgia 23-yard line. Over Donaldson's had an incomplete. Duke Donaldson getting a workout here in the last three plays. One thing about the Georgia, I mean, the uh, Auburn attack so far is it's featured everybody. The tailback, the fullback, and both wideouts into the tight end. That's the secret to a good offensive team, as Coach Pat Dye knows. Coach Van Dye is one of the most disciplined football coaches in the country, and he also serves as the athletic director of a great athletic program at Auburn. It's amazing, too, the way Pat has changed his offense. Of course, so dominating was the Auburn running game in past years. Now they're able to throw it as well as run. Berger on second down. Daniel was tripped up and stretches out to the 21-yard line. That was a nice little draw play that time. Auburn has been throwing the football a lot. This time they come back to, to pass the ball, but they slip it to number 32, Dan Lee, who gets a pretty good block on the left side by Stacy Dunn, number 79, and he goes forward. Third down, seven. One of the things important here for the Auburn team early in this game, don't turn it over. If nothing else, we'll get three with a field goal after this play. Auburn has been much better than that in the first quarter today. Let's see if they can convert this one. Berger under pressure. Throws into the end zone. Complete touchdown. Lawyer Tillman. And the Auburn Tigers take the lead. At the top of the show, we talked about Berger. We talked about Tillman. And here they come into play. Good pass protection. Watch Tillman as he goes down the field. He fakes to the inside. And he breaks a post route to the right-hand corner. Number 20, Beasley gets there late with number two, Smith, and he just out-jumps him. Great athletic play by a surefire All-American, Lawyer Tillman. Glenn Lyle adds the extra point. Six foot, four inch, Lawyer Tillman brings it down to give Auburn the lead. These days, people talk a lot about truth in labeling. Auburn leading Georgia 7 to nothing. Chris Johnson preparing to kick it away. 24 catches Osborne on the far side. And on the near side, number 7, Rodney Hampton set to return for Georgia. And Johnson's kick sailing Hampton's way at the 5. 15, 20, touchback, 30, breaks a tackle, 37 yard line on the return for Georgia. Auburn, excuse me, Link. Jeff Berger, number 12, the quarterback, a roll out to his left. He gets a lot of pressure from number 42, Brantley, the middle linebacker, right here. But he stays in there under the face of a lot of pressure and throws the ball beautifully to Tillman, number 85. Tillman will cut down, take it to his right, and run a quick out post. And he beats number two, Smith, and number 20, Beasley, to the corner. And then he just gets great jumping ability. Tremendous play by Berger and Tillman. 21-yard pass to that man, Lawyer Tillman, completes a 46 six-yard drive. Georgia with it. Jackson to throw. And it's complete at the 50-yard line. Cassius Osborne making the grab. So James Jackson hits a pass, and Georgia's got it into Auburn territory. And a nice call from the Georgia fans. It was a fake run, and first and ten, they have a tendency to run the football. They fake the run and had a nice little bootleg with number 24 Osborne coming across. Georgia's got to do more of that to soften up the great Auburn defense. That was a 16-yard pass play for James Jackson. First attempt from the Auburn 48. The pitch goes to Rodney Hampton. He is hit and taken down back at the 48-yard line. Tremendous play by free safety. Number 35, Carlo Cheatham, the junior from Sheffield, Alabama. And you called it right, the free safety 35. Nice toss play to Hampton to the outside. But here comes 35 to the top of your picture and makes the play right there with a good solid tackle. Remember, I said before, if 35, Cheatham, and 45 staples are up there too fast, that means that Georgia's got to throw the football a bit more to loosen those guys up. Elsewhere, NC State leading in that ACC battle. Ohio State hanging on in the fourth quarter. Georgia has it second down and 10. Hampton to the 45. 
Four scores in college football today. It's 7-0 here, Auburn leading. There's that Ohio State score over Iowa in the fourth. Purdue, five up on Northwestern, also in the fourth quarter. Kansas State is winning. As is Wyoming, the Western Athletic Conference leader. It's third down and seven for Georgia. At the Auburn 45. Jackson cuts it back in. 35, loses the football. And we'll wait for the officials to indicate it is Auburn football. Recovering is Kurt Crane. Number 14, Jackson rolls to the outside, and Auburn's got excellent coverage on him. They make him turn it to the inside. Number 90, Smith makes him go to the inside. But now he's not tucking the ball away. See him running with the ball free right there, and it's stripped. Boy, Coach Dooley is on him right now on the sideline. Tell him, put that ball away when you take a run like that. Kurt Crane with the fumble recovery, and that is another turnover that Auburn has gained. Whopping 34 turnovers in their favor. Now the Tiger offense has it first and 10 from its own 25-yard line, leading Georgia 7 to nothing. One thing about Berger, the way he came on the field, he knows he's hot. He ran on the field like, give me the ball. I can't wait to start playing. And boy, that's, that's bad news for Georgia if he gets hot because he's a dynamite football player. And the leader, number 12, is of the offense of Auburn. Bad die. Only Georgia has won more than Auburn in the SEC in the die years at Auburn. And the Tigers trying to make it three straight wins between the hedges. The pitch to Dan. He picks up five to the 30. Number 60, Stacey Searles is the offensive right tackle, number 60. He comes out, gets a good block on 99 McClendon, and stays with him. The reason why that play was so good is that he stayed on his feet and did not go to his, to his late knees. He's 6'6", 270, a senior, a first-team All-SEC in 1986. Searles has cleared the way for Danley to watch the ball eight times for 26 yards. And Danley gets it again. Nice move. Two to 39. The offensive line from Auburn is starting to eat up the defensive line from Georgia. Now number 20, Peasley, will come up and make a good flat, a block, a good tackle on this play, but by the time he gets to number 20, Georgia's in trouble. Number 20, the free safety comes up and makes a good tackle, but you gotta love the way that Danley dropped that shoulder and punished number 20, Peasley, for coming up and hitting them. Danley has gone out of the game, and another freshman, Harry Mose has come in at the tailback spot. You see Harry getting lined up in a wing left. Reggie Ware is the fullback, and Duke Donaldson in motion. Berger over the middle, and it's complete to the tight end, Walter Reeves. The offensive line of Hudson 66, Dunn 79, and 76 Garner are giving Berger tremendous protection. As you're watching this replay, watch the interior linemen all come up. They all got their hands out in good position. Just enough time. Number 57, Jones comes over and picks up the leaking rusher. Reeves is wide open in the middle. Auburn is on the move again. Nearing the end of the opening quarter. Ware runs into his own man, but he's so powerful, able to carry a couple of tacklers over the 50 to the Georgia 49. The Auburn Tigers, you wouldn't know it's kind of a look on the bench, but they're leading in this game, seven to nothing. Auburn looks like they're on a mission. They don't look like the same football team we saw in the films against Florida State. The line is coming out. Burgle's got, Burger's got the confidence. They look like they're coming here to really stick it to Georgia and beat them at their own game, man on man up front. Only four seconds remain. The clock is running here in the quarter, and the period expires. That is the end of the first quarter in Athens, Georgia, and visiting Auburn, leading the Bulldogs 7-0. First things first, Auburn. They've got the football first at 10 and Berger under pressure and drops at his own 49. For Georgia, pressure that time from Richard Tardis. 
Auburn lead dominant in that first period in time of possession. Most of those came on big plays from Berger. He came to, to come up with a big play. Now, this is one of the things I wanted to show you. Auburn is a tremendous coming out of the box team. What that means is two things. One, they get an excellent game plan, and they know how to attack the other team. And number two, they got confidence in their offense starting in the first quarter because the coaches give them a great game plan, and they execute it perfectly. On the draw, Danler to the 44-yard line of Georgia. Lee, I'm so impressed with this Auburn football team and the freshman talent that's on hand. They got good talent all the way through the line. Now, number 52 pulls, that's Johnson. He gets a good trap, but one of the things that impresses me is when Danley hits this man, number 91, as you watch, number 32, when he gets run into by number 91, Dotson, he runs right through Dotson, who's much bigger than him. That means that Alabama, I mean, the Auburn football team is ready to play. Luke Donaldson goes wide to the right. Scott Bolton to the near side. Third down at six. Danley to the 41. And stacked up there. Auburn needs to penetrate the 39 for the first down. Will Jones credited with a tackle. Scores that affect the Rose Bowl picture. UCLA just two over Washington. Southern Cal and Arizona, no score. And here we go. And as far as the Big Ten is concerned, Michigan State leading in the end. This is an interesting bit of, bit of strategy here. Pat Dye had fourth down and one on his own on the Georgia 40 running. The reason why he's doing that, his defense is playing so well, he wants to back him up. It's more important than making a first down for him at this time. Ryan Schulman handles the low snap. Mark Bowen will allow the football to hit. It gets a Georgia bounce. Auburn quickly to cover as the football comes back at them to the 25. A 16-yard punt for Brian Schulman. Becoming an American. Leading Georgia 7 to nothing. Georgia starting out first and 10 with its own 24-yard line. Jackson trying to throw, but under big pressure from Quentin Riggins, the linebacker. the strategy that time. Number 41, another linebacker come in. Georgia is doing so much running that Auburn put in number 41, an extra linebacker. He blitzes in the middle. Jackson, number 14, can't get away from him, and Riggins makes the tackle. Interesting. They took out a defensive back on first down and in place number 41, Riggins, Riggins, in his place. So Riggins goes right back out of the game after the sack, and now it's going to be second down and 19 yards for Georgia. Lewis lines up in a wing left. The freshman backfield and Rodney hands in the ball carry. Breaks a tackle. Moves it out to the 24-yard line. Auburn leading Georgia here, seven to nothing at Sanford Stadium. And Lake Corso we could not have asked for better weather on this Saturday afternoon for this key game. For a better game. And let me tell you something. Outside in, in the in the bridge out there there's more people that sometimes go to games at other people's stadiums trying to get in here perfect weather no excuse game though coach can't have any excuse in this one you either win or lose it on the field third and ten jackson quarterback draw 35 out to the 39 yard line and that's going to be a georgia first down jackson a little slow in getting to his feet He's shaking up. This is what Vince Dooley was most concerned about. Jackson scrambling and then getting hit because he's not big. But one thing, notice. Notice the way he tucked the ball away this time, ladies and gentlemen. He listened to Coach Dooley on the sideline. But he got hit from behind. And now they're going to have to bring in Johnson, number 18, who's much bigger and stronger than Jackson. Now, the quarterback will run. And Wayne Johnson gets it over to 40 and up to the 43. A long look that time before Johnson decided to take it himself. Johnson is not a young player. He's 6'4", 213, and a junior. He beat Auburn last year over at Auburn with a great effort. So he's a good quarterback, and Coach Dooley's got a lot of confidence in his ability. In that game, Johnson with a touchdown pass, and he also ran for a touchdown as the Dogs won 22. Was there. Number 41, Wiggins, is a major tackle on Johnson. 
Auburn's putting a lot of pressure on him. Number 92, Starwood, and number 96, Roland, run a little stunt in there. And 94, Ogletree puts the pressure on him. What they're doing right now is they're doing a lot of stunning, which means one lineman will go one way and the other lineman will go the other way and confusing the Georgia offensive line. But they'll get that thing straightened out in about three minutes. Duke Donaldson to receive the Joey Hester punt. High snap from Mark Lewis. Donaldson fair catching at the 23. 56 to play, second quarter, still 7-0. On 23-yard line. Donaldson and Bolton, the wideouts. And I backs behind Jeff Bergen. Bolton in motion. Handling. Taken down the fine tackle at the 25-yard line. Coming up tomorrow on ESPN, a big day of NFL football. We kick things off with game day at 11.30 Eastern time. And NFL prime time with the day's finest recap anywhere at 7 Eastern time. And then the Raiders and the Chargers at 8 p.m. tomorrow on ESPN. Danley, the Auburn tailback, has rushed the ball 12 times for 47 yards. Berger looking to throw Zips to the sideline, and it is going to be incomplete. Bidding for the interception for Georgia, Will Jones, the Roverback. You recall he tipped that pass earlier in the first quarter. Good call, Bob, because that's the same defensive coverage they had. They had a bootleg action this time, and they're double covering Royal Tillman, number 85. He rolls to his left, he throws, but Jones has got the short coverage, and he, he does a good job of almost intercepting him. Remember, he's got to have that ball like a pass receiver and control it before it goes out of bounds to be a pass interception. Well, Lawyer Tillman's a marked man. Great player. Third down and long. Berger has all day to throw. Incomplete at the 42. And unable to hang on was Scott Bolton, number 24. Bolton missed this ball because he didn't catch it in his hands. Berger is right on target. He gets good pass protection by every all the guarder, number 76. Now watch. He tries to catch the ball with his belly and not with his hands. You've got to reach out and catch that ball with your hands. It bounced right off his shoulder pads. And then bring it in. Yes, sir. Here's the punt by Brian Schulman. Nate Lewis is back for Georgia and makes the grab of the 25. Can't go nowhere. There's the time on the field. Auburn leading Georgia 7-0. Georgia defense goes to the to the classroom on the sidelines. Johnson in a quarterback for the injured Jackson for Georgia. And Johnson at the 25. 30 to the 32. Both quarterbacks, Jackson and Wayne Johnson, run the ball very well. Elsewhere in college football, what a shootout at Durham. Duke 45, NC State 44. Iowa with a win over Ohio State. 29 27. Suck it down and two. Long snap down to Wayne Johnson. Mars Tate finds a hole, gets the first down at the 35. As you can well imagine, Lee Corso, a lot of bowl scouts in attendance at this big game. These teams always go to bowl games. They're always in that bowl game. Auburn has appeared in five straight bowl games and won three or four of the last five. Last year, Auburn, Auburn went to the Citrus Bowl and Georgia went to the Hall of Fame Bowl. Had great games in both of those appearances. Georgia will be going to its eighth straight bowl game. Tight end, Kirk Warner lining up on the right side. They fake it to take. Pass is batted down. It's received by a lineman. Number 68, Tim Stevens. The Georgia coaches told us he could do it all, but I don't think they had catching passes in mind. There is a penalty fly. Now the officials will be a roll 
Now, remember, once the ball is deflected, the rule is anybody can catch the football and advance it. That's a correct call. Auburn touched the ball. Stevens, number 20, 68, caught it. Now watch. 92 gets his hand on the ball. It is now a free ball. Now number 68, Stevens, gets it and advances it. Put it on his record for one catch, seven yards, reception. And, and the officials knew it was a legal play. They picked up the flag and put it back in their pocket. It's first down and ten. Johnson, hands off. And it's going to be the fullback, Alfonso Ellis. And he'll take it over the 45 to the Georgia 46. 7 nothing Auburn. 6.15 to play here in the second quarter. Now, number 68, the middle of the deep offensive line is doing a good job of blocking on there. But what happens is they leak too fast to the outside, and in comes 94. Ogletree makes the tackle on Ellis. On the play at the line, Lars Tate steps over a couple of his own men and takes it into Auburn territory at the 49. That is the sixth time that Lars Tate has rushed the ball today. Picks up four to give him 28 for the day. They got Lars Tate in there now because he's the biggest, stronger running back in Hampton. And Vince Dooley knows right now he's playing against one of the better Auburn teams that he's played against, but it's like a chess match. He makes a move, Guy makes a move, Dooley makes a move, move. What a great coaching game this is. Ryan Cleveland in at fullback. The fake to take. Johnson airs it out of complete to Hampton. A check it to Nate uh, Lewis, and Lewis takes it down to the 23 yard line. The offensive line gave him great protection that time. He fakes a large player's take on the replay. You'll see he makes the take and freezes everybody. Watch. The linemen make it look like a run. Number 63, Reeler gets a good block, a good fake to take. But then, ladies and gentlemen, this is a shot. He throws that ball right on the line to number eight, Lewis, and gets a big first down. If he hits another one or two of those, watch out. The Bulldogs are on their way. Down to the over 23 after a 26-yard pass play. Lars take to the outside. Trying to cut back, and his feet went out from under him. Then he was knocked down by number 93, Andre Bruce. Bruce is a dominant player. Dominant, 6'6", 236. He was the most valuable player in the 1986 Citrus Bowl against Southern Cal last week. He could really play. Montgomery, Alabama. He's got seven sacks to lead the team. Had three interceptions in one game against Georgia Tech earlier this year, and a miracle Auburn rally. The pitch to take. To the 20. Let's check out what's going on elsewhere. Here's Tim Brando. Tim? A non-conference conference game, if you will, for Alabama, gentlemen, against Notre Dame. The Irish up by two touchdowns, and Rice looks long for guess who? Tim Brown. Another catch for the downtown athletic club. That leads to a field goal to make it 23-6. Right now, the Fighting Irish over the Crimson Tide of Bill Curry. And, of course, Tim will be coming up at halftime, gathering his notes, all the scores and highlights. Georgia driving. Johnson bottled up and knocked down at the 22. It looked, Lee, like it may have been a mix-up back there. It looked like it, but it was a quarterback draw. They love this play because it gives the impression that they're going to throw the ball, but those good runners will come up in the middle and block. As you watch Johnson, he comes back. He's going to throw. He wants a fake little draw play and go up the middle. Number 93, Bruce is there. But if they can get three points here, it's only 7-3. They've taken Auburn's best shot, and they're back in the ball game. Steve Crumley to attempt a 38-yard field goal. And the kick is good. Steve Crumley with his 14th field goal in 16 tries. And Georgia is on the board. Crumley, that makes a, that's an important kick because it gets Georgia on the scoreboard. It's only 7-2. Now, you tell me if Vince Dooley makes it. Do you make it, Vince? Yeah, had it all the way. Had it all the way. Yeah, had it all the way. So Dooley's dogs now are four points in arrears. Seven to three is our score. Three minutes and a second to play in the second period. There's one thing about Vince Dooley I'd like to add right here is the athletic director has got an outstanding record. The Georgia's men and women's athletic programs combined have been the most successful in the SEC five 
five of the past seven years. Great football coach and an excellent athletic director. Coming up next, we'll have the Penn State Nittany Lions ready number 16 against the Pitt Panthers. 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN. Jim Kelly, Kevin Kelly to bring you the action from Pitt Stadium. Auburn 7, Georgia 3 here in Athens. 3.01 to play, second period. Georgia set to kick it away. John Casey will be the man to boot it deep. And at the two, it is Colton. 15. Over the 20 and out to the 22. <laughs> well, the Auburn Tigers will have the first down and 10 from that spot. Jeff Berger talking to Pat Sullivan, not coming into the game. Pat Sullivan has sure made a difference for this young man. Absolutely, and there's been two Auburn Heisman Trophy winners. One of them, 1971 Pat Sullivan, 1985 Bo Jackson. But Sullivan and Berger have been a dynamite combination. 7-3 Auburn. First down at 10. And now there's some confusion, and Auburn has taken a timeout. Timeout on the field. Berger back to the bench, and we'll come right back. Georgia three, the Tigers have first down and ten from their own 22, and Jeff Berger going to work. Loads it out to Danny at the 25-yard line. Terry Webster, the weak side linebacker, came over to make the tackle for Georgia as Danley showing us his talents as both a running back and a receiver. Terry Webster is from Haines City, Florida. He's had 106 tackles this fall. While he was in Florida, he was the state shot put champion. An outstanding athlete right there, number 60, Terry Webster. This time, Auburn brings Bolton and Donaldson as wide outs to the near side on second down and seven. Lawyer Tillman to the right. Again, they swing it to Daniel. Over the 30 and jumps for the first down out to the 34. Two interesting calls. In this replay, you're going to see a little flare pass. The reason why this flare pass is called is that Berger could get the ball to Danley. Danley can get the first down. If he doesn't get the first down, he can run out of bounds because there's only two, uh, two minutes and eight seconds to go. But there's a lot of hitting on this game, folks. And watch out. They'll hit you. Your whole man will hit you. So <laughs> it's a game of survival of the fittest. Boy, if that isn't the, the biggest signature statement of the SEC. They come to play defense in this league. There's a pass to the tight end, Reeves. And Reeves is out of bounds. Stopping the clock with a minute 47 to go in the half. Mike Brown ran him out of bounds. Terrific drive by all of them. There's Pat Sullivan in the orange sweater giving the play to Berger, number 12. He hit Reeves coming across the middle so that Reeves could go to the sideline and step out of bounds and stop the clock. Terrific call that time by the Auburn bench. A 13-yard pass play pickup for Jeff Berger. First down and 10 on the Auburn 46. Complete. The intended receiver out of the backfield, Stacy Danley. On the sideline, you see Pat Sullivan. The reason why he has an orange sweater on or a jacket is that so Berger could see him easy. There's nothing but white and blue and one orange. And now he's signaling in the Berger right now. Do whatever you want to do, and if it looks good, I'll take credit for it. That was the signal. <laughs> is telling him what he wants on the next play. The head coach is always two plays ahead of all the assistants. Berger, 9 for 15 for 86 yards in passing. Second and 10. Donaldson spins away from his man, jumps out of bounds to stop the clock with a minute 33 to go in the hand. That's so important. It's so important because number 29, Donaldson, got out of bounds. A good play. Watch. Berger will come back, set his feet, really good. It's hard to throw to the left as a right-handed quarterback, but he hits Donaldson. Now, 54, Guthrie misses the tackle right there and allows Donaldson not only to get an extra yard or two, but get out of bounds and stop the clock, which is most important in a big drive like this. 
Donaldson and Wright are the wide receivers coming out of the game for the moment. They give it to the fullback, Reggie Ware. And he'll pound it down to the 42. Reggie Ware is such a big, strong runner. He's going over number 76. Rodney Garter, the right tackle, who's 260 pounds. Watch him. They gave him the ball, and he banged right through Brantley for a first down. The reason why they ran that play, it was third down and short yardage, and they needed a first down to keep this drive going. Donaldson wide right. Lawyer Tillman back in the game wide left. Mose is the tailback with Ware. Complete. Reeves. Penalty flags are down to the 32-yard line. A minute five to go in the half. But a penalty to be decided and that flag Lee was thrown back at the 49-yard line. Well, it was thrown with alignment are, so it looks like it's an offensive holding by the Auburn team. Dick Burleson. Holding on the offense. The offensive line is isolated. Take a look at number 76. I believe he calls it on him right there, grabbing a hold of 97 Giles and keeping him out of the play a nice play but what he did is he had his hands out in front now watch 76 he's trying to hold on to him 60's got a piece of him too but let me tell you something the one thing about holding is you never hold with your arms out wide you always hold them in close by the numbers so they can't see you that dies Auburn Tigers now backed up first down and 20 back at the 48 Berger has time, and he gets it to Danley, and Danley down to the Georgia 38. Nice catch by the redshirt freshman from Winston, Georgia. Danley right now come out of the backfield with a nice little catch, but Berger right now is calling all the plays in the line of scrimmage. If you watch him, he's setting his team up, he's giving them hand signals, and he's calling the plays with no huddle. 35 seconds remaining in the half. Berger tossing complete to Duke Donaldson. He's down at the 33. Clock is stopped as the officials have to set the chains. Auburn's doing a smart thing. They're taking everybody and driving them deep, but they're bringing one guy, this time number 29, Donaldson Short. They've always got somebody coming underneath, so if the deep man is covered, they can always dump it off to the short receiver. There has been a timeout call. Coming up at halftime, Tim Brando with all the scores and highlights. He'll bring you up to date on the bowl situation as it continues to change almost minute by minute. One week from today, those bowl bids go out. Timmy's got all the scores coming up at halftime. What's going on in the sideline right now, Pat Sullivan is talking to Berger, and Pat Dye is listening, and then he will say something every once in a while. Right there, he's telling him exactly what he wants. They're looking up at the clock. 28 seconds, one timeout left. If the ball is completed in the middle of the field, call a timeout and we'll kick a field goal. If the ball is on the outside, don't worry, we'll run out of bounds. Vince Dooley is trying to get out of here 7-3 because he's taken Auburn's best shot and he's only four behind. Jeff Berger is that a outstanding half throw in the football, 12 for 18 for 114 yards. Third down and one. From the Georgia 33. Ware picks up the first down to the 31. 24 seconds left in the half. Okay, what they did that time is run the fullback to get a first down, and then they called their timeout, which is the last timeout they've got right now. Now Berger goes to work. Selvin is telling him right now, look, we're going to the two-minute drill, which means if you complete a pass, step up and throw it out of bounds to stop the clock. We do not want to have an interception. We'll take three, so we have a 10-3 lead at halftime. Twenty-four seconds remaining. Vince Dooley win situation today as far as the SEC title is concerned. One of the things you want to keep your eyes on right now is number 85 deep in one of the corners because remember, if they send 85 deep in a the corner, they might get a pass interception or he might just out jump everybody and it looks like a great pass, but it's a touchdown. Lawyer Tillman out jumped everybody to get that touchdown pass in the first quarter. He's six foot four and he can use that frame and those amazing hands of his. I love the line by Coach Dye about Lawyer Tillman, Lee. He said that Lawyer Tillman's got suction cups on his fingers. <laughs> Watch him in the right-hand corner. 
Berger. Donaldson out of bounds with 19 seconds to go in the half. They're double teaming Tardis number 96, so they can't get in. But let me tell you something on this play. It's good pass protection, but this was a great play by everybody involved in the Auburn line. 54. Thompson just runs into the outside. 36 where gets a good block. There was two guys in the top of your picture. There was two guys on number 85, Tillman, and left Donaldson wide open. But watch the Tillman in the left-hand corner or Donaldson on the sideline. Time remaining in the first half. Berger has time. The sideline, Donaldson out of bounds with 13, 12 seconds to go in the half. Okay, same play. What they do is they're sending Tillman down about 15 yards and breaking him to the touchdown to the corner, and then what they're sending Donaldson out about 12 yards to the flat. Now watch the left side of your picture. You'll see in the top of your picture number 85, Tillman. He's a decoy out there, and if they double cover him, the number 29, Donaldson is open. That is one of the best theories I've ever seen in a two-minute drill, and they're working it to perfection. First at 10, Auburn at the 17, 12 seconds with which to work for Jeff Berger and company. They throw it up for Donaldson. Incomplete and no penalty flags. What everybody's yelling about, they wanted an offensive pass interference call at number 25, Donaldson, but they didn't get it this time. The replay here comes Tardis trying to come in there and number 54 Guthrie comes in and hits the quarterback but Auburn did a nice job they did not give the ball up and they're trying to go in 10-3 as we talked about about three seconds ago Lynn Lyle puts it down at the 24 this will be a 34 yard attempt for the Auburn place kicker Flies, Georgia jumps. The kick is good. With three seconds left in the hand. And they will decline the penalty. The old coaching axiom, don't take those points off the scoreboard. Not if you're Pat Dye and you're in a struggle and you're away from home. That was a great drive right there. He will not take the play. I'll tell you what, that was one of the finest two-minute drills that I've seen in action this year live in a big game. Lee Albert had it. At their own 22 with 2.53 to go in the period. Two minutes and 50 seconds later, Wynn Lyle kicks a 34-yard field goal, and Auburn leads by seven. The reason it made it such a great drive is that Berger was almost perfect in his play calling and his selection. He was sending the man number deep, Wyatt, to the corner, and he was sending Donaldson short. Pat Dye has got to be excited because team took back the momentum. Wynn Lyle, not only an outstanding kicker who walked onto the Auburn team, He's our student of the game with a 3.2 grade point average in three men. You know, it's, it's, it's really interesting, but here's a game 7-3, seven, 7-3, three, seven, three, and all of a sudden you get three points and you feel like Auburn has taken over the game again just before halftime. Psychologically, a big field goal for the Auburn Tigers. Chris Johnson to kick it off for Auburn. Osborne and Hampton are deep. What's the strategy here for Auburn with three seconds left on the kickoff? Squib the ball because remember now the, the rule is this. The clock does not start until one of the Georgia men catches it and starts running. In fact, some of the times teams teach the Georgia receivers to just fall on their knee so they can get up and throw the Hail Mary pass instead of trying to run it back. SEC showdown game. Now let's check in the studio and our man Tim Branton. All right, Bob Rapid and Lee Corso, thank you very much. That means ever so much in the bowl picture. Auburn with the lead right now. Speaking of the bowl picture, today's winner could perhaps be taking on the Syracuse Orangemen in the Sugar Bowl. The drama under the dome. We're going to talk about that here at halftime. And a rough as Brandon is kicking off for the Georgia Bulldogs. 10 to 3 Auburn as we start the third quarter. And the kick comes down to Harry Moe. 
15, 20. Moe's trying to get to the outside, 25. And he is hit and taken down at the 32. Auburn leading 10 to 3. And here's a look at their possessions in the first half of play. They really dominated possession time of the first quarter. They kept it away almost 12 minutes to uh, three minutes for the Georgia Bulldogs. The touchdown pass to Lawyer Tillman there. A couple of punts. And then the field goal by Wynn Lyon. Jeff Berger, quarterback. Duke Donaldson is in the game along with Laura Tillman. Walter Reeves is the end. Stanley and Ware are the setbacks. Berger throws. Donaldson catches. At the 30, out to the 34. League with 82,000 on hand here at Sanford State. They haven't had a lot to cheer about today. Auburn has led throughout, but i got to believe that's going to be a big factor later in this game. Absolutely. One of the key statistics we'll show you later on is that Georgia has scored 91 points in the fourth quarter and completely dominate their opponents. Stay, fo stay on, folks. It'll be a great game. Some movement in the line and penalty flies. Goes line. Second down at seven for Auburn. Georgia seems to think the movement came first from Auburn. Our referee today is Dick Burleson. Dead ball foul. False start. Offense. He the down. Once an offensive lineman puts his hands down, he cannot move. Number 60, Searles moved his right hand. Five-yard penalty, and it got the crowd into the game. off to Danny. Danny will finally take it down as he got back to the original line of scrimmage, which was the 32. And a penalty flag is down. <laughs> well, they've got to straighten this one out. Jeff Berger talking to referee Dick Ferguson there. the face mask five yards in him he beat it down five yards means he didn't do it on pur purpose it was inverted remember we had a 15 yard penalty before there's stacy searles number 60 isolated he runs smack into number 29 and right there's the face mask for five yards remember the two face mask penalties could be five yards if it's not done on purpose and 15 yards if it's done with intention Georgia three, second down at six. Tillman in motion. Where? Stacked up. It'll be third down and about three for the Auburn Tigers. It's an old coaching saying, but it's really true. The first two series, offense and defense in the second half, usually, usually determine who takes over. And right now, it's third down and three. And if Georgia can stop them right here, this place is going to go crazy. And there's Jackson getting ready to come back in if and when the Bulldogs stop him. He injured his knee in the first half. Two tight ends for Auburn, Reeves and Sellers. Where is the short yardage man, the fullback? Berger fakes it to him, throws. It's complete. The catch made by Harry Mose, and he's off to the races. Mose at the 25. Mose to the 10. Brought down from behind in the 5. And a magnificent play call for the Auburn Tigers. What a call. What a call. The reason it's a great call is they've been giving it to Weir every single time on third short. Now watch the big Berger to Weir. Look at that big. 36 is got it. Oh, no, he doesn't. And all of a sudden, Berger throws the ball out in the flat to Mose, who breaks the tackle by number 20, Beasley, and he goes down the field. That particular call could have won the SEC championship for the Auburn Tigers. Oh, the Auburn fans are wild about Harry. A 55-yard catch and run. Stanley to the four. Danley picks up three more. 
Stacy Danley's been the leading rusher in this game. He's got 54 yards for the Tigers today. It's very, very important that Auburn jump ahead 17 to 3 because Georgia has a running team and not a great passing team. It takes them longer to catch up. And that's what Pat Dye tell him. We've got to get seven and make sure we get at least three. Second down. And goal for the Tigers. Tillman in motion. Georgia handing it off this time. And Reggie Larry stop. It's going to be third and goal. The Georgia defensive line is, is really playing hard now. They're submarine, which means they come under real low and make the quarter and make the tailback and fullback break to his outside. Now watch the linemen. They're all standing them up right there. 99 McClendon step, step up the group right there. Number 36 squares on the bottom. Now we got an injury, Coach. Searles is going out of the game up front for Auburn. Jim Thompson is in to take his spot. Searles limping off. One of the key linemen in the country. And now Jeff Berger going to the sideline. There's Stacy Searles, number 60, the junior from Tryon, Georgia. Down on the field. We'll be right back. On the Auburn three-yard line. Auburn three yards away from scoring. Donaldson in motion. Berger looking. Throws. Touchdown. Duke Donaldson making the grab. A bullet pass from Jeff Berger. His second touchdown pass of the game. They put Donaldson in motion that time. They used number 85. Tillman is a decoy. And number eight. And from the end zone, you'll see number 29 Donaldson come along in motion. And he slips right over the line of scrimmage, right in front of number 60. Webster and catches the football. The reason that was a great play is all he needed to do was get across the line and Berger hit him perfect timing for a touchdown. Win Lyle with the extra point kick. And it is good. 11-14 to play in the third. It's Auburn by two touchdowns. And could have been the play to turn this game around. The kick by Chris Johnson into the waiting arms of Rodney Hampton. Ripped up by uh, number 42. There's Berger. This is what Berger sees from the end zone. This is what the Georgia team sees. Berger drops back. You're watching the bottom of your picture, number 25, the 29 Donaldson, slip across the middle and just catch it one yard into the end zone. Perfect play. Isolation by Berger. Drops back. Looks. Gets a good block from 66 Hudson. Sets up. Throws it. Touchdown. He knows it. And watch Pat Guy. He's excited on the sideline also. Tate, James Jackson Lee back in the game at quarterback for the Georgia Bulldogs. Here's a look at what Georgia did with the football in the first half. Their possessions. The Auburn defense forcing punts right away. Then the fumble lost by the quarterback Jackson. A 10 play drive resulted in a Steve Crumley field goal for Georgia's only points. Tate to the 31-yard line. Notre Dame has posted a most impressive victory over Alabama. And you folks who are watching that game, welcome to Athens, Georgia. And this SEC matchup, Auburn is leading Georgia 17-3. We have 10 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Bob Rathman and Lee Corsa with you between the hedges. And James Jackson sets Georgia down at the line of scrimmage. The fake to take. Jackson loses the football for a second time, and Auburn has recovered. Carlo Cheetah with the mumble recovery. And James Jackson hangs his head. Jackson makes a good fake here to take. He's watching the replay. After the fake to take, he rolls out to his left. He's got a naked bootleg. He's holding the ball real well, but remember, he's only 5'11", 175 pounds, and wow, he gets smashed by Staples, and the ball is loose. Coach Dooley was very concerned about the beating that James Tat Jackson took last week against Florida. He thought it might come back to haunt him. It has so far. Auburn's got another chance. First down and 10 at the Georgia 37. Daniel turns the corner. 
Good yardage over the 30. Near a first down at the 28. Good block there by Duke Donaldson on the corner. 32, Danley does a nice job of starting to the outside. Now watch 42. That's the best football player that George has got to offer. He can't stop him. And Danley's driving himself up until Beasley makes the tackle. The offensive line from Auburn now is going to try to control the game and get one more and then force Georgia to come from behind in the fourth quarter. Donaldson to the right side. And Lawyer Tillman coming in motion. Berger will pitch. And Danley. Picks up the first down at the 26 yard line. Nine minutes remaining in the third quarter. Auburn leading 17 3. Here's Danley right again, the tailback. He gets a cross play. What I like about this play is he cuts it in there right there. Watch his body lean. He's got a good body lean, and he's going for every yard that he can make. Right now, the offensive line from Auburn is beating the defensive line of Georgia to the snap, and that is winning the ball game for the Auburn Tigers. And that offensive line, Stacy Searles is back in the game lead at that right tackle spot. He walked off with an injury. He's back in the game. Fullback where? To the 19. You know, Bob, it's almost unbelievable, but unless you've been a coach, you don't understand this as much as what I understand. You can't believe that a fumble would hurt the defense. But psychologically, as you're looking at scores, psychologically what happens to the defense when they see the offense and turn the ball over like that, they have a tendency to get down. I don't understand why, but it happens almost every time. Tackle to the outside, 15, penalty flags at the 11. A nice job of running the football by redshirt freshman Stacy Danley. And the penalty appears to be going against the Auburn Tigers. Clipping. That will take some of the momentum away from Pat Ty's team. Nice little ball handling here to number 32 Danley. He's carrying the ball to the left hand, which is the proper way so that you can use the right hand to protect it. But right there, we get a clip, clip by one of the outside receivers, and it's a 15-yard penalty. But again, it doesn't make any difference about the penalty as much as Pat Dye knows right now that his offensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage, and that penalty, it doesn't bother him as much. Three penalties for 30 yards now for the Tigers. It's going to be second down and 14. Berger under pressure. It's complete to the tight end, Walter Reeves. And Reeves is hit immediately and can gain only to the 26 yard line. Walter Reeves, six foot four, from Eufaula, Alabama. Lynn Lyle on the Auburn bench getting that right leg tuned up. 17 to 3, Auburn. If Auburn goes back to what they've done the best, right now this play will feature number 85, Tillman, or number 29, Donaldson. They swing it to Daniel. He lunges to the 23, but that's going to be way shy of a first down. An interesting call, and you'll say, why did they throw that screen pass? Georgia has a tendency to play man-for-man -man coverage, and that little slip screen would have been perfect. It was safe, so they didn't turn the ball over, so they have at least a chance to kick a field goal here. Lynn Lyle is the man, and he's coming in to attempt a 40-yarder here out of the Brian Schulman hole. Kick is good. Win Lyle hitting it on a field goal. And the Auburn Tigers have taken a 20 to 3 lead over the Georgia Bulldogs. Attention. He's left to play in the third quarter. The deep end. Cassius Osborne on the left and Rodney Hampton on the right. Auburn leading Georgia 20 to 3.
the four. 10, 15, looking for a seam. Bent and dropped to the 17 yard line. It's a good replay of number six, Wim Lau. Watch the concentration. The interesting thing here is Brian Schulman, number one, who's the punter, is the holder. The reason why they have that combination is those two guys have nothing to do with practice except hold for one of the other guys and punt. That's why they use the punter for a holder most of the time. And Georgia makes a change at quarterback, junior Wayne Johnson, taking over the reins from James Jackson, who has lost two fumbles. First and 10 from the 18. Johnson. Johnson at the 20. He's got some room on the sideline. 30, 35, and up to the 41 yard line. Walking by making something out of nothing, Ray Corso. He goes to his left on a nice little bootleg action, and everything is covered by the good open defense, and then he kicks off to his right. Now watch. He goes to his left, he wants a tight end, but he's covered, and he fakes the ball and comes to the right side. But now, he's got enough speed to outrun everybody, and 68 Stevens gets a good block. He cuts it back in, and he protects the football. Johnson could be what Georgia needs to catch the Auburn Tigers. A 21-yard run for the quarterback. First down and 10. The football marked at the 39. Setting up the screen. Oh, it's intercepted by Auburn. At the 29-yard line, number 99, Nate Hill. And it looked really like he threw it right in his arm. He didn't see Nate Hill, and I'm surprised he didn't see him. He's 6'5", 266. What happens, he rolls to his left to throw a little screen to number 32. Take the right there, 66, comes out of nowhere and intercepts it. And I'm telling you what, we had Stevens catch a pass and Hill in interception. This is a game of linemen getting the first time ever in Capitol for him. So Auburn starts at the Georgia 29, first and 10, leading 20 to three. Here comes the reverse, and it is right at the 20. Right down the sideline, score! Can you believe it? Watch it's a cross play. Now he's going to hand it to right. Watch the fumble. It fumbles into the air. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when you're hot, you're hot. They drop the ball, flips it up. They got a guy, a lineman, intercepts a football, and right uses his speed and boy, to Auburn. Now they hot now. Boy, when everything's going right, Lynn Lyle is on to add the kick, and he does. Five minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It is all Auburn, 27 to 3. Comes back to his home state and adds a touchdown and a reverse. And the Auburn Tigers are now dominating the Georgia Bulldogs. 27 to 3, with 5 26 to play in the third quarter. His goal line returns. 20 to the 25. One of the best things Bob to do is after you get a team on the ropes is run a long pass or reverse. Here's Danley handing the ball off, throwing it up in the air, right does to get good timing, and he goes 28 yards for a touchdown. When you're hot, everything you do is right. That play basically should have dropped the ball. Now, Berger takes the ball, tosses it out to Danley, who gets everybody chasing him. He drops the ball, flips it up in the air, catches it again, and goes all the way. And beats number 42, Brantley to the corner, and it's touchdown, Alexander Wright. Now Georgia with the question back to Hampton and Cleveland. It's gonna be Johnson. Look at the pass, but now running, and he's looked from behind by Quentin Riggins. Lee, what can Georgia do against this Auburn team now? They are really in dire straits. It's 27 to 3, and what they can't do is panic. They've got to try to get a touchdown here, make it 27 to 10, and come back in the fourth quarter as you're looking at some scores. One of the problems with Georgia's attack is when they get from behind, get behind like a wishbone team does, it's hard for them to catch up. Johnson on second down. Incomplete. I think that was batted away by Kurt Crane. He reached around. Troy Sadowski, 87, and 
I think he got a hand on that ball, Lee. 39, the linebacker, Kurt Green, is a transfer from Memphis State. Now, 87, Sadowski will go down. He works away from Crane. Crane's got a piece of him by holding on to his jersey and then comes back and strips the ball. Now, if the official would have seen that from the right angle like we did, he'd have called that holding and it would have been a first down for the Georgia Bulldogs. Instead, it is third and 11. Johnson. Complete. John Thomas breaks a tackle into Auburn territory, and he's out of bounds at the 46-yard line. A big catch for the junior from Milledgeville, Georgia, 31 yards. Lane Johnson, number 18, threw a perfect pass that time to Thomas coming across. Coach Dooley's been in many games like this, and he knows it's not over yet. As you see Johnson drop back, he gets good pass protection by all the linemen. 75 Adams gets a good block, but there's a shot right there to Thomas, who gets smart and gets out of bound. First down, Georgia. They need just to get 10 points before the end of the quarter. Ryan Cleveland. Bringing the football ahead for Georgia. A couple of yards to the 43. He's a true freshman from Claremont, Texas. But because of the injury situation, Vince really wanted to redshirt this young man, but he's been forced to use him. He's responded. He played very well against Florida last week and in there in a crucial situation today. Hampton 7, 37 Cleveland, both freshmen, both players from Texas. They split the backs. And this time, it is going to be Cleveland. Breaks through. And gets down to the 37. He escaped a couple of would-be tacklers. 5'10", 190 pounds, and he's powerful. Watch him run to the left. Carries the ball to the left hand, which fundamentally is very sound, which means he had good high school coaching. And then he drives right through the defensive, the defensive man, number 46, Phillips, and makes a good drive. Georgia needs to be patient. they got to get out of this quarter, 27 to 10, and they got a chance to win it in the fourth quarter. Johnson, this to be 37. Edward Phillips, number 46. And his other inside linebacking partner, Kurt Crane, with the tackle. No matter if they make this or not, but they cannot punt the ball. They've got to go for fourth down if they don't make this play right here. There's some long faces on that Georgia bench. They have not led in this game. Auburn piling it on here in the second half, leading 27 to 3. But as you mentioned, Lee, Vince Dewey has been through these wars. He knows what a quick touchdown can do to turn this, the emotions of this game around. Big play here, fourth and one. Lewis in motion. Tate cuts back. He has the first down. At the 35. That's why Vince Dooley loves Tate. He loves him because he's a senior. He knows he'll make the big play. He's got that extra credit and extra power. Watch number 32. Gets a good block there by number 83, Warner. He gets away from number 35, Cheatham, and makes it on his own. I tell you what, half the backs in the Southeastern Conference would have been knocked down for a loss, but Tate made it on sheer determination. Two minutes and five seconds remaining in the third quarter. Complete at the 29-yard line. Lars Tate has it, goes out of bounds to stop the clock with a minute 48 to play. Nice grab by Lars Tate on the Wayne Johnson pass. The thing you gotta like about Tate, he makes the fourth down and one play, right? He comes through, makes a little fake, and then he makes a good catch right there with his hands. They got good pressure on Johnson, but he reaches out and catches it. That's why the pro scout thinks he's one of the best prospects in the South. His ability to run and also catch. Pick up for Larson. First and ten, Georgia. They think it's a thing. Johnson over the middle. Incomplete. Nearly intercepted in the end zone. Carlo Cheatham nearly picked off the deflected pass in the end zone. He's really kicking himself. He had it right in his hands. The way things are going for Auburn, he should have intercepted that pass. That time, <laughs> Johnson throws the ball to number 24, Osborne. He makes a good fake to Tate. He comes back. He drafts number 83 to tight end across. And watch. It deflects right off his hands right here. And 
Oh. Cheatham almost gets it. Cheatham almost gets it. Now, here's number 93. Wolves coming through. He's trying to get in there, but he got a nice little piece of him. And the 68 Stevens grabs him by the face man. Lucky to Jack Georgia. Lars Tate puts his head down and takes it to the 16. Kirk Crane jumped on his back there. A minute 30 to go in the third quarter. But, Bob, what a tremendous call from the sideline. Pass, pass, pass. All of a sudden, they give the ball to that big tailback who runs a sprint draw, and he gets the extra yardage to put him in a situation where it's third and two. Remember, it's really only second and two because they're going to go for fourth down. No more field goals. Lars Tate, the tailback. Alfonso Ellis in front of him. Ellis trying to throw a block for him. Tate cutting the corner. He's out of bounds at the 11. So Georgia continues to move the football on the Auburn defense. A minute to go in the period. And there's the big reason why. Great drive. Good calls from the sideline. Excellent concentration by number 18 there, Johnson, who's used to coming back and beating Auburn. He's not afraid. He'll stay in there. Tate can beat him. Julie can beat him. It's a great fourth quarter coming up, ladies and gentlemen. Receiver Osborne coming to motion. Johnson. Johnson's going to run it now. And gets back to the line of scrimmage. Number 99, Nate Hill, who intercepted a pass earlier in this period, making the stop for Auburn. Elsewhere in the Pac-10 Arizona, leading USC, Oregon, Hastings, Washington State, Stanford, a big lead over Oregon State at the half. California. Ooh, a number on Arizona State as Ugga puts him. Tate ahead to the 10, Grimes to the 7. Lars Tate, who is in the top 20 in the nation among running backs, and has a senior driven to win this championship. They like that sprint or draw to the tackle to the left side. Good blocking on a point of attack by number 68, Stevens, and 63, Wheeler, and Tate drives it in there. Now, at the end of the fourth quarter, remember, Georgia scored 91 points this year in the fourth quarter. They never give up. The fourth quarter, look at that. They've outscored their opponents by that margin, and they trail Auburn 27-30. They're going to need some fireworks here in the fourth quarter. They're knocking out of the door here. Third down and six from the Auburn seven. They can get a first down without scoring. Johnson. Now throws. Tips incomplete. Kirk Crane batted the ball away. Good defensive coverage by Auburn in the end zone. Now it's fourth down, and Coach Dooley will probably go for a touchdown as he's telling the man what he wants done. Now watch. He fakes it to the left and comes back to his right. The tight end is open, but he doesn't see him. Good pursuit there by the Auburn defense. They got him hemmed up. Number 46, Phillips, get a piece of the ball. The reason why Coach Dooley is going for this is because if, even if he doesn't make it, he leaves the ball down there, and maybe his defense can score for him. And Tate, now they break Lars off, out of the eye. Johnson, tip, incomplete. The intended receiver was John Thomas, number nine. Carlo Cheatham helped break it up. So Georgia does not score. Good call from the sideline because it was a great pattern by number nine, Thomas. But the Auburn team just makes a tremendous defensive play. It's a perfect pass, and then all of a sudden, Cheatham comes out of nowhere and deflects the ball. Now, Auburn is down here with a 27-3 lead. Georgia has to do this to win on the replay. Watch Johnson. Good protection. Throws the ball straight. Good call. Good play. This is what Georgia needs to do to win. they got to score two on offense and one on defense defense and come from behind with three touchdowns. Meanwhile, the Auburn Tigers would love to control the football here. They're sitting on a big lead. And Danley is met immediately. Number 42, John Brantley making the hit. 
You know, Lee, these Georgia seniors have never won an SEC championship. They're going to make one last stand. Absolutely. And 42 is a senior who, from Wildwood, Florida. Watch him step right in there. Ford out of his perfect position. You notice he tucked his butt in there. He came right up from face to face and drove him backwards. John Brantley, excellent play. Suck it down and 10. Berger throwing from his own end zone. Complete to Donaldson. And he's out of bounds at the 16. Jeff Berger continues to throw to Duke Donaldson. He's caught nine passes for 65 yards. The reason he's catching all those passes, he's on the same side with number 85, Tillman, and they're sending Tillman deep, and there's at least two guys going with him, and Donaldson is one-on-one -on -one in the short flat. That's why Tillman has caught all those passes, because Tillman is such a great player, and he's got two guys going with him. 14 minutes remaining in the game. Third and one. Donaldson now at Moses. Danley ahead. It's going to be close. I think he's got the first down, but we'll see. The spot is what is so important here. Danley shaking up, and he, he really took a shot that time. The timeout is called here by the officials to let the Auburn training staff take a look at Stacy Danley. We'll be back. An unforgettable dining experience. In Athens, Georgia. Auburn shy of the first down. So they must punt it in Brian Schulman to kick it back deep to Nate Lewis. Schulman, a high kick to the 37 yard line. It is taken there by Nate Lewis, and Nate Lewis takes it down to the 41-yard line of Auburn. On the replay, number 60, Webster will make the tackle, but watch number 29, Will Jones, come in from the outside. Now, Danley runs the ball in the middle, 60, Webster will make the tackle and stop him right here. And now watch Will Jones try to strip the ball. Georgia has got to strip the ball. They've got to score on defense because there's not enough time for their offense to score three touchdowns. 47-yard punt, but a 22-yard return for Nate Lewis. This is Wade Johnson. Great field position to work with from the Auburn 40-yard line. First and 10. Johnson going deep in the end zone, incomplete. Cassius Osborne was the intended receiver. Johnson lets it go. We try to get to Osborne deep for a touchdown. Remember now, everybody in the stands is yelling it should be pass interference. There can be no pass interference on an uncatchable ball. That ball was nowhere near Osborne. Therefore, there could be no pass interference. Alvin Briggs was defending. Second down at 10. Thomas and Lewis are the wide receivers to the near side. Johnson. Needs a block, gets it, cut back, and gets to the 30-yard line. Another great game coming up next on ESPN. Number 16, Penn State, against the Pitt Panthers. Jim Kelly and Kevin Kiley standing by. 7.30 Eastern time for the kickoff from Pitt Stadium. And then the final game in our triple header at 11 p.m., Colorado State meets San Diego State. A first down for the Georgia Dogs. Johnson has rushed the ball nine times for 32 yards. He picks up a first and 10 from the Auburn 30. Now throwing the football, an incomplete intended for Nate Lewis on the near side. Now let's check in the studio with Tim Brando. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Let's go out to the Pac-10 where Gary Costin of Arizona gives Dick Tomey a lead over USC. It is now 10-6, the Wildcats beating up on their former coach, Larry Smith. Let's go back between the hedges, Georgia and Auburn, Bob. Thank you, Mr. Brando. 27-3, Auburn. 12-53 to play in the game. Johnson. Under pressure, and he's back. Back in the 34, Andre Bruce. 
We mentioned earlier that Andre could make the big play. It took him a while, but he got a key sack. Well, when you let him just rush the passer, watch out. The pro scout thinks he's a great prospect. From the left-hand side of your picture, he'll come around to the outside. He gets by all the defenders and makes a play. He's an All-American high school basketball player and one of the finest all-around athletes in America right there. Now it is third down for Georgia. 14. by the shirt, taken down again at the 40-yard line. This time, number 94, Craig Ogletree, and number 41, Quentin Riggins were there. So again, the Georgia offense stalls. But 93 proves that that's a good play. 94 says, I'll do better than that. From the right-hand side of your picture, 92 stalwart comes to the inside, but watch, 94, Ogletree with an outstanding effort. 41, Riggins recovers the ball, and Georgia is in big, Big trouble. Tonight, good Penn State, then that doubleheader next Saturday ought to be a dandy. Let me tell you something. We saw South Carolina play, and we've seen Clemson. That could be one of the best games of the year on that Saturday night. The fourth Georgia turnover of the game, Quentin Riggins with the fumble recovery, and Auburn has the verdict. He's going to throw, and it's going to be complete. And it was Greg Taylor into the game at a wide receiver spot to make the catch. This is what Pat Dye talked about us yesterday afternoon. He could force Georgia to a passing game. He felt like he could win. Look at that statistic, and that's exactly what's happened. Auburn has stopped Georgia's run, made him go to a pass, and look at that record. They can't beat anybody when they have to throw the ball only. Suck it down for Jeff Berger. And Reggie Ware out to the 50. Ware, by Bill Goldberg. On the Georgia sideline, quarterback Wayne Ball Johnson. And oh, those Georgia turnovers today. Four turnovers in this game. The beginning of the game, Auburn, as I said, looked like they were on a mission. I've seen Auburn play Texas once this year. They didn't look anywhere more intense than they do now. They look like they came here on a mission to win this game, and they're after this Georgia ball club. Despite the fact that Auburn is unbeaten in SEC play, they still have to beat Alabama two weeks hence. Lawyer Tillman making the catch. the football it's down to the georgia 44. we talked about if burger was hot that auburn is almost unbeatable burger is hot he's so hot they got a 27 to 3 lead and they're throwing the football which could then lead to a turnover but pat die knows that burger is hot and he's going to go with the quarterback with the hot hand and keep throwing that football Pat Dye, the Georgia graduate, class of 62, has certainly found the secret to winning at his alma mater. A victory today will give Auburn three straight wins at Sanford Stadium. Trying to sneak out of there is Harry Mose, and he goes down at the 44-yard line. I want to say something about Pat Dye while I've got a chance. He's a man of his word. Let me tell you something. Last year, he gave the Citrus Bowl his word that he would take Auburn there. Another bowl came in and offered him more money after that word. You know what he said? No. Now, that's a man of integrity that kept his word right there. Pat Dye and the Citrus Bowl story of last year. Coach, you mentioned Jeff Berger passing the football. 22 of 28. Two touchdown passes, 212 yards. For the senior from Cedartown, Georgia. So he comes back to the Peach State and has a big game. Harry Mose back at the line of scrimmage. As we look back on this game, Lee, I think we'll find that that third and one play to that man, Harry Mose, and he took it 55 yards that got Auburn in a position to score may very well be the big play of this game. And I think I said there at that time, that play could have won the SEC championship for him. That was a real gutsy call. It was a perfect call. It worked. It turned the whole game around and could have turned the whole season and taken this Auburn team to the Sugar Bowl. Auburn at the top of the play was ahead 10 to 3. They started the second half. Berger has hit eight passes in a row. This one is going to be intercepted. And Georgia's got it. And picking it off was Vince Guthrie, the outside backer. 
8.55 to play. Auburn leading 27 to 3, but Georgie's got it back. Number 92, Tardis, the man we featured in the beginning of the show, makes a good pressure, puts a pressure job on Berger, who throws it wild. Now remember, number 54 has got to have at least one foot in bounds when he catches it. Uh -huh. How about his back foot? I don't know. But George has got the football and a chance. And the back and quarterback is James Jackson. He's going to try to throw Incomplete, trying to make the one-handed grab was Troy Sadowski. Brian Smith that time putting the pressure on the quarterback, Jackson. The problem that, that Georgia has right now is that everybody in the ballpark needs to, they knows that they have to throw the football. The defensive backs are playing zone, keeping everything in front of them, and then turning those five good defensive linemen on the quarterback without any responsibility except hit number 14. Jackson at 162 yards of pass against Auburn here two years ago. Throws. It's complete. Rodney Hampton takes it to the 43. Scores and highlights. We check in with Tim Brandon. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Fourth and goal, and Steve Webster is stuffed at the goal line by the Wildcats, and Arizona preserves its lead over USC that game in the third. Larry Smith can't figure out the problem. And it's now 10-6. Jackson back to pass. Throwing, and it is going to be incomplete. Intended for Nate Lewis on the near side. 8.21 to play in the fourth quarter. Auburn 27 and Georgia 3. Georgia's doing exactly what they have to do to get back in the ball game. They're throwing the football, but Vince Dooley's got them throwing the ball smart. They're throwing outside cuts so that when they catch it, they can get out of bounds and stop the clock. They're not only fighting the Auburn team, now they're fighting 8.21 left in the fourth quarter. Osborne in the slot. Jackson looking under pressure. Throw! and a catch by Osborne, and he's, no, now they say incomplete. Boy, I thought he made that grab before he got knocked out of bounds. Kurt Crane and Carlo Cheatham covering. Carlo Cheatham, number 35, keep your eye on number 24 as he goes down and out and up, and Cheatham, number 35, will come right in here and give him a good hard shot. Now, he's got the football. Right now, that should have been a completion because, number one, he had control of the football. It was knocked out of bounds. Watch. Jackson throws a strike. Osborne's got it. The ball is knocked out of bounds. It should be first down Georgia right there. Bad call by the official. Third down. Jackson again. This time, incomplete to Lars Tate, diving at the 22. Just about six inches too far for Lars Tate out of the backfield. That play hurt them. You play before that, Coach Dooley saying right now, that play killed them. Because at least they would have had a first down of the 20 with a chance to win this football game. 27 to 3, Auburn. And Georgia must punch and David Dukes. Kick it to do Donaldson. Donaldson fair catch at the end. Seven minutes and 58 seconds remaining in the game at Athens. And Auburn leads 27 to 3. Athens, Georgia. A welcome to those of you who are watching the UCLA destruction of Washington, 47 to 14. It's been all Auburn here today. Moe's trying to find some running room. And he can make it back only to the eight. Where it becomes second down. Here's the storyline for the dayline of Athens today. Auburn really taking advantage of those Georgia turnovers. You said Lee Cooser to start. Berger had to have a hot day, and he's had a hot day. Berger started off hot. You could tell the way he came on the field the first, first series. In the second series, in the third series, he couldn't wait to get out there and throw the football. So Pat Sullivan on the left, Pat Dye on the right. Great game plan, but a tremendous play by the entire Auburn team. Curtis Stewart is in the ball game at fullback in front of Harry Mose. Auburn has it second down. Berger takes the pitch, naked bootleg, out to the 15 and out of bounds. 
7.04 to play in the game. You know, Auburn and Georgia are great football teams. Let me tell you something else about them. The University of Georgia has produced more scholar athletes than any other Southern College or University 30. Auburn's in the top five in that category, and look at the titles that Vince Dooley has won. Vince Dooley right now is probably the most respected football coach in the country on and off the field. Runs a classy program, a tremendous man, and a credit to the coaching profession. Since Vince has been the AD, the University of Georgia has claimed four NCAA championships in all sports. Here's a pass incomplete. Moe is unable to make the catch. What has happened to Vince Dooley today is he ran into a good football team who was on a mission. They were determined to beat Georgia, and nothing. Georgia, Vince, the crowd was going to keep them from winning this game. It's hard to believe, Lee. 82,000 plus here at Sanford Stadium. They were not a factor today. Nate Lewis received the Brian Shulman punt. Lewis at the 48, and Auburn covers it so well. 37-yard punt, and just a one-yard return. Elsewhere, Oklahoma, well, they had a struggle today. They remain unbeaten. I mentioned the UCLA victory over Washington. Syracuse, a big come from behind effort to knock off BC. Notre Dame routing Alabama. Clemson, ACC champions with that victory over the Maryland Terrapins. Jackson spinning away. He's got some running room. To the 45, 40, down to the 34-yard line of Auburn. James Jackson's doing what he does best, and that's run the football. And it's always amazing me. A, a player like Jackson, who's only 5'11", 175 pounds, will give his body up to the university. Watch this. He avoids number 93, Bruce. He starts running. He's tucked the ball away. He's learned that since the first quarter, and he drives himself forward to make a good, get a good game. Indeed. Jackson doesn't give up. 17 yards for Jackson, giving him 80 for the game. They're trying to reverse. But Auburn's there. Nate Lewis tried it, but it was Andre Bruce to slam the doors. Oh, man, what a defensive play by 93 Bruce. They tried to run the option on him because he usually chases the ball down. But this time he's well coached. He stays at home, plays his zone, watch him bring down and make a high tackle in the open field. Can you tell me a better outside linebacker than Bruce? I don't know. Looking at Nate Lewis's face and saying, you're not supposed to be standing here. Here's Jackson. Look at the throw, and it's going to be complete down to the 11-yard line. And a great grab that time by John Thomas. In a crowd, he made that catch at his at the knee. But what a beautiful job of concentration. Jackson 14 will throw the ball straight as he goes back to his right. Now keep your eye on Lewis, number eight, because the ball is right there low, but he keeps his eye on it with a terrific play, and 45 staples makes the play. Thomas, excuse me, number nine. John Thomas with the grab, a 24-yarder. Jackson. 10. Jackson to the three. Kurt Crane making the tackle. Got some help from Quentin Riggins. Jackson's trying to take him in here. Jackson's going to take him in and get a score. It's going to be 27-10. They're going to have to kick an extra point. I mean, uh, uh, an onside kick and get the ball. Now watch. Kate gets a good block right up in here. And then he comes out. Watch him. Boom. That's he's got a run. He's got a tackle. He's got great play. Kate's an All-American type of football player. And Jackson is an All-American competitor. 4.45 to play. Georgia trying to get it into the end zone. Jackson tries to throw it, and it's incomplete. Jackson, I don't believe Lee could make up his mind. Well, he made up his mind, but the defense the team put so much pressure on him, and he tried to throw the ball to number 47, Randy Jackson, the fullback from Rome, Georgia. Watch. He's rolling out to his left. He's going to run it, but all of a sudden, they put a lot of pressure. Number 46, Phillips is in there. He tries to get the ball to Randy Jackson, but doesn't quite make it. But they'll go for two more, and then try to kick an onside kick. Lewis goes wide to the left, two tight ends. 
Jackson keeps it. And a penalty flight. Nick Burleson's crew knocking things over. It's Tooley. Offense with four turnovers and without a touchdown of this game. Let's see what Mr. Burleson has to say. Grabbing the face mask. Five yard penalty against the defense. Repeat third down. But remember, it's, if it's a five-yard penalty, it's only a penalty half the distance exactly. to the goal. So it does not get the first down for him. So it's about a two-and-a-half-yard penalty. The situation here on the fourth quarter. It looks at the sixth lead like Georgia needs about a half a yard for a first down and about two yards for a touchdown. The light pace, 32 here. There he is. Touchdown, Georgia. The Georgia Bulldogs put it in the end zone with Lars Tate. Lars Tate is a senior. They like him near the goal line. He's a very competitive player from Indianapolis, Indiana. He drops his shoulder back and he wants to score as a senior and he does. Georgia's got to go for two now. Took an outside kick. Get lucky, get another lucky play, get back in this ball game, and you believe in miracles? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'll tell you, they're going to have to use up all the luck in the next 4 14 to get back in this. But you know what? Coaches, and I don't mean, I mean, I mean this seriously, you never give up. Sure. Coaches never give up. They, they're trying to win this game. Vince still thinks he's got a chance to pull this one out. Now the Georgia two point conversion attempt. Complete a penalty fly. The intended receiver was Cassius Osborne, number 24. And the flag may mean that uh, George is going to get another crack at it here. We'll see which way the interference is going to go. Jackson will roll to his right and throw the ball back to number 24, who's sneaking to the bottom of your picture, trying to get behind him. The good defensive position by the Auburn team, and they call pass interference on I don't know who. Well, they, the official uh, signal was a hold. But the flag was thrown there in the end zone, and I thought it was pass interference. Nonetheless, half the distance to the goal, so now a two-point try from the one-and-a-half for Georgia. Think Tate now, Coach? No, they'll run it. Roll out. Going to be Lars Tate. Can he get in? Yes. Good call, Bob. 4-14 to play the game. Georgia adds two. And now the scoreboard story is 27 to 11. You notice that play right there. They tail back to the 32. Bob Rathman called it. In a clutch situation, give it to your great player. And Tate gets it in there. Just does make it. Now it's 27-11. 27-11 coming on, onside kick coming up. Now watch the good play here. Tate again gets the touchdown. They've got to have this touchdown, Tate. We're counting on you and get it in there. And then watch Coach Vince Dooley. You never give up as a football coach. That's why this guy's a great person and a great football coach. That boy, Coach. We still got a chance. 4-14 remaining. Mars Tate with his 12th rushing touchdown. Scores all eight points. But they, Bob, excuse me, they've got a chance if and only if they get this ball right here. Auburn bringing 10 men up within five yards of the 45 yard line. Steve Crumley is in to kick it. It's a live ball, and it looks like Auburn has fallen on it at the Georgia 47-yard line. Now more scores. Here's Tim Brando. Timmy? 
All right, Bob, thank you very much. The battle for the Rose Bowl, well, it was close, but only for a short time. This is the opening kickoff of the second half. Blake Ezor, the sophomore out of Las Vegas, Nevada. He goes all the way down inside the 10-yard line. That would lead to a touchdown. That would set the tone, really. The Spartans win 27-3. George Perlis will join us between games. Alan Massengill is standing by live. Back to Georgia. Okay, thanks, Tim. We look forward to hearing from George. Congratulations to Michigan State. Here's Harry Mose banging it out for a couple of yards. What all they'll do now with four, four minutes and four seconds to do, they'll give the ball to Bowles, they'll give the ball to the fullback, and they had a nice scoring drive of 51 yards, George did, and they give the ball to the number one guy, Tate. Auburn will continue to have two hands on the ball and force Georgia to use those three timeouts. Tate had a great career here. It's not over. They got a game against Georgia Tech, and then they'll go to a major bowl game. Mars Tate so desperately wanted that SEC championship. Harry Mose again. He's dropped at the 44. 27 to 11. Auburn leading. And of course, there's one more hurdle lead for the Auburn Tigers of Pat Dye. They've got Alabama in Birmingham on the 27th. And another must win situation. Yeah, and that'll be on television. Over the past three seasons, Auburn has been on television 23 times. Since Pat Dye's been the coach there, they've had an average of five television appearances a year. They played pretty well with it. Needed Chandler to train down. The Burger throws an interception. Georgia at the 30. 25 and down to the 20-yard line. Vince Guthrie picks off the pass. Never give up. 249 left, and Georgia's got another crack in. Okay, when they did that time, Auburn went to a crossing pattern, which is a real nice safe play. But Berger threw the ball behind the receiver, and Guthrie makes a good interception and goes down the sideline. Right there, Guthrie's going down, and Berger saves the play, and they're not out of it. Now, what they've got to do now is try to throw touchdown passes right now. They cannot use the clock. It's not over yet. Jackson. Throwing to the end zone, and it's an incomplete pass. Oh, my, just off the hands of Kurt Warner in the end zone. Oh, Lee, that had six points written all over. Do you know what that would have done? It would have been 27 to 18 with two minutes and 43 seconds to go. The action just overflows Kurt Warner, number 83, who dives out there and tries to make a sensational change. But let me tell you something. Jackson gets clobbered here, but he's not giving up. Bruce is all over. Second down and 10. From the Auburn 21. Jackson again. Over the middle complete. Hampton at the 5. Rodney Hampton making the grab. George has got it first and goal the Auburn 5 with 2.33 to play. All right, that's the time they do have the number 7. Watch number 7. He comes in face. we got a good ISO on him. He breaks it down in the middle. They throw it to him. He breaks away from 46 Phillips, and he goes down and makes a first down. Now, what they've got to do now is throw the ball into the end zone every time because if they don't, that clock will get him. Georgia brings the two tight ends in. Sadowski and Warner. Lewis in motion, Jackson pitch it, Hampton wants to throw it, looking, throwing, and it's intercepted, and now what official says incomplete. It's an incomplete pass. The Auburn coaching staff is irate. They thought they had the interception. But Troy Sadowski saved this play. Watch, Hampton will throw the running pass into the end zone. The rule is for the receivers. If you don't catch it, make sure the other guy doesn't catch it. Now watch Troy Sadowski strip the ball loose right there. Terrific play by Troy Sadowski, number 87. And a good look, too. The official from behind signaled interception and a touchback. But it was knocked loose. Now Jackson back live trying to throw. He's under pressure. And he's two kind of bounds wisely with 2.01 to go. Jackson, the bounds of the board. And Jordan. And James 
Jackson will have his third down at the four-yard line. All right, he's got two downs. He's got third and four. If he doesn't make it, he's got fourth and four. What Pat Dye is concerned about right now is not only this touchdown, but that next onside kick. He's got to get his onside kick team ready, given the fact that they might score that next onside kick could be for the SEC champion. into the flat. A good call from the sideline. Hampton's got the ball, but really a nice play by number three, Porter, and number 45, Staples. Good play. Bitch. A minute 50 to play in the game. It's Auburn 27, Georgia 11. The dogs have it. Fourth and goal. Jackson dancing around. Big trouble. Throws it into the end zone. It's going to be incomplete. Jackson rolled to his left. They had really good pressure on the outside. They knew they wouldn't just come, come out to the outside, so they kept it contained. He rolled around to the right, and you're taught that if you're going to be caught, throw the ball in the end zone no matter what. Now, he rolls to the left. He gets really good defensive pressure to the outside. Now, here comes 39, Crane chasing him. He's going to get tackled right there. He just throws it in the end zone and hopes for something good to happen. It didn't. Auburn will win the ball game, but Georgia made a gallant effort to come back and beat Pat Dye and the Auburn Tigers. This is the first time, I believe, that Auburn's Pat Dye is breathing easy. Now Auburn just has to take care of the football. Stacy Danley runs it out to the six. You know, as we were talking about at the top of the show, Auburn and Georgia have been playing for a long time. But I'm going to give you an interesting fact. An interesting fact that in the 1892 in the Auburn-Georgia game, Georgia's first mascot was introduced. You know what it was? No. A goat. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine those two Georgia people say, how about them goats? <laughs> I like that. So the clock now starts to melt down in Auburn's favor. The Tigers in their history have claimed but two SEC championships. They can make it three in a couple of weeks against Alabama. Curtis Stewart running it straight ahead, but now the officials trying to keep things cool down there. Under 45 seconds to play. Both these teams have had great teams in the past. Auburn won the national championship in 1957, and Georgia did it in 1980. Bad die. The Georgia grad, seventh winningest active coach in the NCAA. And well, what's the secret, Lee? He's come back to his old stomping grounds. He's won three in a row in this state. Well, first of all, they were on a mission. They're not intimidated by coming over here. Second, he's got a good staff. Wayne Hall is one of the best defensive coordinators in the country. He's talking to Bud Casey, the outstanding running back coach there. Pat Sullivan does a terrific job with the quarterbacks. He's got a good staff. He's got a good program. And obviously, he's got a big win over one of his favorite teams to beat. Georgia Bulldogs. And this, uh, what a comeback. This team was trounced by Florida State just a week ago. But they we come back and play like they have today. Yeah, but we looked at the films together on that, and that was not that was not indicative of what happened. Auburn turned the ball over the first three or four times, sure. and Georgia, Florida State jumped on them. And Florida State's a great football team also. Today's Volvo players of the game are for Auburn. Quarterback Jeff Berger, 22 for 32, two touchdowns and 212 yards. And for the Georgia Bulldogs, the player of the game is Lars T. A TD, 14 carries, 54 yards. Volvo will donate $1,000 to the General Scholarship Fund at each school in these players' names. Barry Moe out of bounds at the 19. Auburn will raise its record to 8-1-1. 4-0-1 in the SEC. Georgia will fall to 7-3 and 4-2. And and One of the great treats that we've enjoyed here, particularly at halftime in this game, was 
the Georgia band. I know you got a big charge out of that. Boy, I tell you, I got a statistic that's going to kill you. One of the most stable jobs at the University of Georgia has to be the Red Coach Marching Band Director. In 82 years, they've only had six band directors. Maybe you should have been a band director instead of a coach. Obviously. <laughs> Second down, we mentioned Auburn and that game left for all the marbles November the 27th in Birmingham against Alabama, a big loser against Notre Dame today. Auburn's got a week off. Georgia's got a big game against Georgia Tech. They got a week off. Both of these football teams will be a major bowl teams because they deserve it. They're coached by two of the finest coaches in the men in the country, two of the finest gentlemen. They got first-class major league programs, and they will go to major bowl games and represent them the Southeastern Conference in first-class fashion. The expression is still the whole story. It was Auburn domination. They kept the ball away from Georgia in the first quarter and never let the, the dogs get anything going. They couldn't get this big crowd into the game for an emotional lift. And when they got when they got into the game, Berger took them right out of it with some sensational plays. And we'll look back, I think, on that third and one to start the second half. Auburn was driving. They had a big crucial third down play. And instead of giving it off to Reggie Ware, they decided to kick it out to Harry Mosey. Went 55 yards and set up a Georgia an Auburn touchdown. And the Tigers never look back at this one. Another snap for the Tigers. Burger to one knee. Don't forget, coming up next, we got a dandy. One of the great rivalries in college football. The Penn State Nittany Lions and the Pitt Panthers at Pitt Stadium. That's coming up next right here on ESPN. Tim Brando in the studio. He'll be updating you with scores and highlights. Pat Dye getting the victory ride at Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia. Consecutive time, Auburn wins at Georgia. The final score, Auburn 27, Georgia 11. Auburn remains unbeaten in the SEC with that tie against Tennessee. And they, of course, can wrap it up in a Sugar Bowl berth with a victory over the Alabama Crimson Tide in Birmingham in a couple of weeks. Vince Dooley's ball club gets ready for Georgia Tech. Its chances of a Sugar Bowl bid wiped out here today as Auburn wins it 27 to 11. Two touchdown passes for quarterback Jeff Burton. For Lee Corso.